My name is Toby Weiss and today I invite you to a little walkthrough of the news track I composed for the news release by Sound Iron, the music box. Uh, and today I'm gonna um, look at a specific part of the track. Uh, so let's listen to the part at first. So what you may have noticed is that um, the song is a little bit dressed up. There's a little bit of core stuff going on and um, a tiny bit of percussion. But besides that, um, I created everything with the new plugin we are talking about today. And you can really do a lot of stuff with that. So let's um, walk through this part uh, step by step. First, um, we have the lead instrument elements. What you notice at first is that I, once again, used a lot of volume automations. I really enjoy using that technique um, to kind of take away um, the attack of an instrument at specific points and make it snap back again to the track to use um, the release and the sustain and decay phase of the instrument. Um, that way you can create very interesting sounds, especially if you use instruments that have a really fast attack time in general. So this main lead instrument that um, leads us throughout the whole track is um, a simple creation of uh, the small hall, layer one of the, of the plug-in. We also have a large hall uh, and that's it. It's literally um, the preset, the great and powerful. I always enjoy um, going for the presets since Sound Iron always creates um, awesome presets and it's a great starting point to yeah, get used uh, with the new instrument. And right in the beginning, you notice that um, another instrument, this tiny um, sign synthesizer joins the music box and at specific points uh, when I take away the attack time of um, the main music box this tiny uh, synthesizer it's all, only a sine wave continues with the melody and uh, yeah kind of creates this specific sound when the attack time of uh, the music box is taken away and the synthesizer keeps playing There you go. It, it doesn't play every note, it just um, drops in every then and now. There you go, it pans from the right to the left to use um, the stereo feed of the track. It's always important to, to think about where you want to place your instrument. They noticed that um, the, the lead instrument changes. It begins with this music box um, that gets interrupted by these uh, automations I talked about. And then other instruments just like catch the main melody and continue them. We have, for example, the synthesizer I talked about. I created that uh, also with the music box, of course, with um, a dry layer one and the cluster ambience. That's something pretty cool. Um, if you use the effect track um, that comes with every sound iron plugin and, for example, the ambience and the sub synthesizer sounds, you always can create um, pretty interesting sounds. So. 
you could say that every sound iron plugin comes with a quite useful synthesizer too and I really enjoy using their their fx rack so um yeah it's not only about um the music box they just released and um yeah that's um the main one of the main features of the track that the main melody gets carried by different instruments and it allows me to present different sounds that come with um the new plugin. Beside this um, main stuff going on, we also have um, some more synthesizers. There you go. They only join the track at that specific point. And I again used a lot of volume automations to make them snap in and out again. And yeah, it's it's a short melody that um, supports the main melody that gets carried by this tiny, sweet, high-pitched synthesizer over there. Mm, you can listen to that again later in the track over here. There, the sign note only plays this um, long pitch. We have um, the synthesizer playing like four notes. Notice that it's the synthesizer combined with this dry music box sound. And a lot of distortion, of course. Also, we have this sound based on another preset. Very nice. You could totally use that for some movie as of X or something to create ambiences. And um, yeah, there's this first backup. It's um, a more dry music box. If you uh, listen to uh, the main music box I created, um, it's kind of with a lot of reverb going on. And this um, backup um, music box is, is way more dry. And that's a nice effect to, to kind of use the same instrument by take away the reverb room. And again, I use a lot of volume automations. If you listen to that in solo, and that's what I talk about. If you take away the tech time, kind of every instrument sounds in a complete different way and you, you can make it shine in very specific ways. What you also notice is on this instrument, it's also, um, and I, I, I kind of use it as a percussion element since it's not a percussion library obviously um, I had to, to improvise and um, <laughs> combined with um, the backup dry music box I talked about And again, um, it supports the instrument where the attack is taken away. Um, we also have this synthesizer. Very calmed down. But, but you notice it. You don't always have to kind of put as much volume as possible uh, on the instruments you enjoy listening to. Sometimes it's it's... A good idea to only use it at the points where you really want to make your ideas shine. In general, I always, I kind of always begin a track with a lot of stuff. I just record everything I have in mind, and then um, one of the most important things is to take away as much as possible of the track, so that that what stays in the end is really only stuff that is the most important stuff. And that's 
one of the hardest things to do too because you kind of like every idea you had in mind but still in the end you it leads you to a better result um yeah panorama automations again going on and um now let's take a look at um the backup chords it's very interesting very interesting sound it's it's a combina combination of the large hall layer the small hall layer and a like of a reverse um arpeggiator And what I did with that instrument is, at first, I um, have a mod wheel automation. And I also had this um, volume automations to make it swell in, go back again, swell in, snap back again. Yeah, beside that instrument I talked about a few seconds ago, there's also... Um, It's, it's a nice, like, it feels a bit like a retro sound, a bit of distortion going on, saturation. And again, I, <laughs> yeah, did start with um, the volume automation. And now let's listen to that without the volume automations I talked about. We're gonna turn the read mode off. Just turn up the volume a little bit. In this solo mode that works too, of course, but in the whole track, you don't reach that specific feeling without these um, volume automations. We also have this kind of, I call it melody counter, with a lot of delay going on. Again, volume automations. And this joints. Again, swelling with the volume automations. That's also a beautiful preset. It's an arpeggiator with I, which I added it a bit. Really like that. Really nice, a lot of reverb. I also always enjoy um, combining very dry stuff with reverb stuff. You shouldn't do that if you aim for a realistic sound. In that case, you should kind of, you have really have to, have to think about your um, reverb room since in the real world, you don't have different reverb um, rooms if you're sitting in a room and listening to music. So, um, that's nothing you want to do, but because of that, because um, it doesn't exist in reality, it's always um, a pretty interesting experience if you combine um, different reverb rooms to create your track. Um, We also have this um, FX track uh, I created with the instrument, a lot of uh, distortion again, and um, the flang ambience. It's a very weird sound. Combined with an other sound, an awesome sound, which <laughs> Yeah, supports this weird feeling of the whole track. We also have this um, FX track that joins later. Mm -hmm. 
there you notice uh, the pink note that joins. There's also this kind of bass I created with, um, I think, a dry music box here and um, a sub that's um, pitched down two octaves. I really like that. It's a good sound. And we have a mono bass on only a sign. That um, gets fade in at the end of the track. And also um, at one very specific point. It's again something like this ear candy stuff, what I talked about, to only use interesting things at very specific points. And if you listen to that on solo, it's a short swell, but in the um, other parts of the track, there wasn't bass until then, at least not that deep one. And at that point, it fades in and yeah, creates a specific effect. So let's look if we have something else. Okay. That's it. Of course, we have on um, the background uh, stuff. You can take a listen to uh, the chorus. I also use a lot of automations. Yeah, as I said, a lot of volume automations. I really enjoy them. Uh, in the end, I'm pretty sure that uh, you are able to find a lot of ways to use that instrument. I, I love music boxes. Um, I use them way too often in my tracks. Uh, and so I was really excited to be allowed to create a demo track for this new music box release. Because I'm pretty sure you can't own too much music box VSTs. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough and I'm looking forward to the next one. Have a great day.